I'm just thinking, there's another project, the wife's put this chair in here for me to fix. And you'd think a bloke would find time to fix it, wouldn't you? But anyway, I'm a little distracted trying to get these bee boxes ready. I've been painting up these bases. That's been a bit of a project, but that's been happening while you weren't here, so it's pretty magical. These were a bit disrepaired. They got a bit of cleaning up going on, get a bit of a paint. So I thought we'd stack these out the way so we can get on and paint some more. I don't know. I'm not really sure, but sometimes it's good fun and other times I get a bit bored and listen to a podcast about random ass shit. <laughs> so anyway, painting, painting, painting. It's the joys of beekeeping in winter. The joys of it all, folks. Ah, oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. This is when you've got to get your paintbrush out. Oh, I don't know. It's a laborious business, this blooming paint and bee boxes, but for some reason I quite enjoy it. So anyway, we'll go and get ourselves a box. They were the ones we cleaned the other day with our flamethrower. Get them organised for the lady so they all look pretty. So when they come home, they'll go, oh, isn't this a lovely looking home? I'll be all happy to move in there. And yeah, well, actually it's just because it keeps the wood happy and safe. I don't think the bees give a toss, actually. It's more about us beekeepers that want to keep things nice. And so the wood will last a bit longer and, and they kind of look, you know, look respectable when you turn up to a farmer's farm to put your bees on. We'll just do one of these, which has got its own base. So you've got to, these are slightly more complicated to paint. So we've got a base and we've got a lid. Did you actually remember which lid went to which box? We've got three lids and three boxes. I would say that orange one is that one. Anyway, it'll be a process of elimination. These are fairly old school boxes because they've actually got no tin on the lid, but they've got real wood. So they're, I don't know, they're probably older than me and they're still going. So I don't know, I don't think I'm going to worry, but that's a beautiful bit of timber on there. I reckon that's one whole piece. Hang on, we'll get in the sun. You wouldn't see that too often anymore, a piece of timber like that that's not even joined together. It's the truth. Whew. I reckon that one came from there. Looks about like it matches. That'll do, that'll do, that'll do, pig. <laughs> well, ah, oh well. Cool. So we'll slap a bit of paint on that. I think the legs are okay. Yep, this one's legs are okay. Some of these, some of these as we're going through, we're going to have to fix up the bases as well. Knock some of these old legs off. They've been a bit rotted up. But. We've got a solid lid and we've got a tin bottom. Whatever we be then, so we could be the bee box boys. Coming to a place near you to suck your nectar. <laughs> Charge! I think we might have to come up with a more efficient battery, but anyway, the joys of it all. Just go and get my paint scraper, a bit of a final little clean up. I think these boxes might have seen a few honey harvesters. Tidy things bees, you know, it was weird because I was up looking at that crazy um, fish tank beehive observation -y thing that we've just got organised up there. Actually, come to think of it, we should show you a little footnote for that. But anyway, and they had all the little sticks that they were dragging out because, you know, we had the little nest and we put it in there and the little sticks that were surface to their requirements, they were dragging them out and flicking them out in front of the hive. And I thought, well, golly gosh, they're ambitious. Now, oh, shit. <laughs> Me thing. Now I have something to show all you young apprentices out there. I have been known to destroy several pairs of clothes on this painting project. I've got several, and I've even got some paint on these pants that I've got. I've got one lot that's got all the whole paintbrush marks here where I've rubbed on it and scraped things. So I thought to myself, this is ridiculous. And I remember back in kindergarten, back when I was in kindergarten, now there's a while back, actually it might have been when my kids were in kindergarten, I remember it from, they had these things called smocks, which pretty much were an old bloke shirt wrapped around backwards and they used to do the buttons up on their back. And so they had a, had a big old shirt when they were doing their stick and paste. 
that's back in the days when your kid come home with the macaroni on the plate, you know, with a coloured plate and the macaroni stuck to it and a bit of glitter and shit. And you put it on your cupboard and you, or on your fridge or on the cupboard and you said to the kid, oh, isn't that fabulous? You know, your Picasso or whatever it was. But doesn't matter. Anyway, I thought to myself, maybe I could do that. So I went down to the op shop and I went and got myself an apron. I thought, I'll go a little bit up school, a little bit old, well, a little bit older maturity rather than a back to front shirt. I'm probably too fat to get a back to front shirt anyway. So I thought I'd get myself an apron. So I've got myself a painting apron. As you can see, I've used my painting apron a bit. And I put my apron on and then my clothes don't have to get all covered in paint. So I thought that was, anyway, I thought that was pretty bloody clever. And I know what I've got. I've got the social kitchen on my apron and all. I have a flowery one here somewhere, but I don't know where that is. And so this is the this is the presentation one for the telly. <laughs> anyway, away we go. Let's get the painting on. So why don't we just take the cardboard off the table and tip the shit on the floor? Wouldn't that be a good idea? Since I've got a volunteer here that'll sweep the floor up for me. We'll get rid of that drum. Another advantage to having a movable painting station. I might put them away, because the last time I was painting, I had my safety glasses on the paint deck. <laughs> and then the poor jolly things all get covered in paint, and then you've got to spend the afternoon, or oh, usually, usually spend a little bit of time watching telly, when, uh, when everybody's in bed or inside, and you scrape the little bits of paint off, but it doesn't do them any good, so I'm gonna put them out the way. Things, lessons learned from life. So this is just a little undercoat to get us started. Obviously, if you paint, you know, if you're not back to the wood, you probably don't need an undercoat. But then again, it'll depend how old the box is and it'll depend on what the blooming paint's made of. So that's the next excitement you've got to go with. Because if you put, anyway, if you put acrylic over water-based or water-based over acrylic, one of those ways around, it doesn't work real flash. So <laughs> you'll know when it bubbles up and goes weird ass on you. So anyway, anyway, we've got an undercoat. So we're gonna do that. Give it a bit of an undercoat and then we'll have to let that dry and then we'll put the top coat on. So here we go. I wonder if that's what that's for. I bet you that's not a paint opening thing. Looking for a stirring stick. See what happens when you tidy up. You can find some things and other things go away. <laughs> this stirring stick will do. Pretty sure that's a rejected um, top bar beehive cutty outy thing. Thank you for all you folks that pray about me not cutting my fingers off. It's all very nice, so I appreciate all your prayers and consideration. The lad appreciates all the laughter as well, because I mean, you know, he's been giving me shit for years, so here we are. Anyway, it's all good. We appreciate you all coming along to this bee journey with us. Tell you, I tell you what. <laughs> ah, man. You wouldn't think painting boxes could be so much fun. Here we go, here we go. Hey, I don't know, this box will be a few days old, I reckon. Anyway, we might get another year or 10 out of it. Just work the primer into the putty holes or the nail holes that are protruding a bit. Cause they're gonna be the bits where the water gets in and makes the wood go a bit awkward. Do you reckon that's 100% correct? I don't really know. What I know is it's got to be better than when we started, doesn't it? Surely. Give it a bit more life, a bit more protection. Uh, look good from a distance anyway. That's what the wife usually says when I'm painting the kids' bedrooms. Oh, I look good from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look too closely, that's the thing.
So this is the this is the one we've got with a bit of undercoat, and we're on to the next stage, which is top coat. You're only going to get to see one top coat, but anyway, it'll get two top coats, and then we'll have to put our little brand on it, and then back to see Les and get them all straightened out. Whew, tell you what, it's a bit of an exercise in enthusiasm. This is. We've got ourselves a little bit of exterior paint. It reckons it's good for four seasons, but I don't know whether that means four seasons as in it's gonna be screwed up in a year or whether they're talking about it's good for winter, summer and spring, meaning it's all good for every time of the year. Just make sure that it's an exterior paint because you don't really wanna be putting an interior paint on an exterior project, but of course you'd already know that. And there's an ad that goes with this paint too, that it goes, trust British paints, sure can. But I don't know whether, anyway, that's getting back into history and I don't know if they run that ad anymore. Oh, no, no. Anyway, the cameraman reckons I'm digressing, so on we go. This is actually a really cool lid opener. <laughs> back of this thing, I'm sure that's not what it's for, but it's better than a screwdriver. Look at our stirry stick. Anyway, don't forget, of course, you've got to stir your paint. Go, you get all the bits in there, all your colours mixed up and your liquids mixed with your paint bits. So it's all, I don't know. I really don't even know what's in paint. I was reading it up. Did I talk about the whole Ford thing when they were talking about how they made the car paint? That the old, um, what was it? Henry Ford, his first car was all black because it was the only, only colour that didn't go weird ass in the sun. And then there was, uh, I think it was GMH, General Motors, the opposition, anyway. And they were trying to work out, because of course everybody had a Model T Ford. And so they'd really, Henry Ford had sold all the cars to all the wealthy folk that could afford a car. And so they were like, well, how are we going to get organized? And the cool thing was that I thought when I was listening to this story, it was really awesome. They got a lady, they asked, no, I think they asked, the manager asked his wife, you know, about the car. And she said, well, why don't you make it a little bit blooming inviting? Like, you know, put some cool colours on the thing. Get organised and make some nice, you know, make the thing in, make the thing comfortable. Make the seats comfortable. Make the bloody windows so they don't whistle. That would be good. And so they got all organised and they spent, I don't know how many, I think it was Dulux or somebody like that. Well, anyway, one of the paint companies got organised and spent a year trying to figure out how to get some paint on a car that wouldn't fade. And so then they got all, they actually made, I don't know, five or six different coloured cars. And so all of a sudden, GMH was like, well, look out. So there was that whole crossover between practical and beautiful. So, and apparently as a footnote, they made um, nail polish as well. At the same time, that's how nail polish got invented. So <laughs> how crazy is that? <laughs> that was, I think, yeah, well, I guess that was the invention of enamel paint. And now we've got blooming paint with speckles and sparkles and all sorts of crazy ass shit. We even had a car one time that in the sun it was a different colour. Like it was purple sort of, and then the sun would change and it would become a, like a greeny colour. That was pretty crazy. I don't know what that was called. I think it was a Harlequin car or something stupid. But anyway, anyway, there you go. There's a bit of paint history for you. Someone's going to write in and say, what the hell? It might be full of crap, but that's what I heard on the internet, so... Oh, no, no, don't, don't beat me up as it's not 100% true, but I thought it sounded like a jolly good story. Rightio, so we'll get our little paintbrush, scrape our stick off. I hope it's true. Yeah, <laughs> golly. Oh, this should be. It's online. No one tell any lies on there, would they? <laughs> oh, look at this. It's going to be like a bought one. But I don't really know, you know, because you go online now and you've got all these um, blooming massive big bee selling stations. And I think you can buy a wooden super box already painted and organised for you and I think it's only about 30 bucks or something. So, it already, I don't know how they transport them. I was just curious. I was going to ring them up and say, what do they send them in their own bloody shipping container if they're all made up? But anyway, I guess they work that crap out somehow. But... But anyway, I don't know, going forward, maybe that's where beekeeping's going. We'll just be like everything else in society and we'll just use it for a bit and it'll be disposed of and get another one. So, uh, that'd take all the fun out of this show, wouldn't it? I mean, it uh, we'll take all the fun out of it. We would be having this episode if we were doing that.
Well, that's our little, actual, complete little brood boxes. Ah, now for the supers, we'll try something slightly different. Being that I've been excommunicated from a nice little spray yard, I've had to move outside, so... Ah, I tell you what, you have to come up with a different idea when you've been sent out on your own. I reckon if we could sneak back in there on the lawn, we might get in the shit, so we're not going to do that. Anyway, so my plan is we're going to get these poor old women paint horses or work horses. They're older, older than old. <laughs> we're just going to put, the, put them out, put some boards across and hang the supers on so we can paint all of them without getting all, well, without them getting all covered in crap, but we'll see how that works. That's my plan anyway. We'll just cart them over here. some wood. I wonder if they were called horses because you could ride it like that, you know. Like that. <laughs> You'd want a bit better saddle, I think, though. That would hurt your ass after a bit. I think these old bits of horse might have been around for a day or three. Anyway, that will do the job. Looks like they've got a little bit of paint from the previous excitement. So if we put them there, and then we'll see how many we need. We might be able to do another row the other side, won't we? Bloody hell. Have you a bit rinky dink? Oh, I'm not real tough, so maybe we'll just jump. <laughs> oh my goodness, they vary in weight a bit. Must depend on the wood. That's a super moment in history. <laughs> oh, golly! That'll play out your muscles. We'll push them all the way out. Right? I'll put the next one on. That will save you worrying about it. Anyway, if you're wondering what craziness I'm up to here, I figure if I get them on these things, then I won't have to. Because if you paint them, you end up you have to turn them over because you can't paint this lip all the time. So I figure if it's hanging here, I can paint all the sides, paint all the ends, then they can just dangle there and dry. Anyway, I thought it was a good idea, but we'll find out. <laughs> I thought it should be. It should work. It's a fairly good theory. <laughs> Mind you, it'll probably be just my luck. This crappy old bit of wood will break, but I don't think all these boxes will be that heavy, so we should be right. Anyway, I'm sure we can edit it out if we screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's enough excitement for the middle. What do we got? Maybe one or two either end? Oh, look at us. Oh, gosh. Out here, breathing the fresh air. Ah, it's a nice, isn't it? <laughs> well, I guess it's always it. Fresh air until we get all the paint fumes from two in this project, won't there? Oh, golly gosh. I reckon that's what you call custom designed. How many have we got? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Just remember, 12 aside. Can't really have another lot. Well, he could if you took these two off the end because it's hitting on the leg, so. But anyway, for the purpose of this project, that will be just dandy like that. Right, I think we're up to the paintbrush part of things. So we'll bring that out. Paint pot, paintbrush, paint scraper. And here we are. This would be the paint station then, wouldn't it? If I was being real technical. Hold that thought.
Oh my goodness me. That's nearly enough rest and relaxation for one day or for one morning. Well, I tell you what, only a couple hundred to go, but we're not going to torture you with all of that. That's coat number one. That's just basically the undercoat, and then we'll do a couple of top coats, and then we'll be all beautiful. So if you happen to want to paint some supers, and you get kicked out of your wife's backyard, you might have to do it in your driveway. <laughs> so here we are. Anyway, there you go. Perhaps find yourself an old, what the hell are these things called? An old blooming workhorse, a couple of bits of wood, and you can have a bit of fun in your own little painting yard. Anyway, I've got to go and clean up because I've, as much as I've got a bit of, I've got my apron on to stop me getting paint on myself. And look at that crap. I took my jumper off because I was getting paint and now I've got my crappy old shirt on and I haven't got any paint on that at all hardly. I think it's the paint gods. I don't think they like me at all. Anyway, I better go and clean up. Might be time for a hot dog. Thank you. <laughs>